Mr. Add-ons aluminum cases are some of the most beautiful cases you can get for your Mr. FPGA setup. The case doesn't just offer beautiful aesthetics, it also cools your Mr. FPGA passively. The case itself is a heatsink, so you won't need to use a fan and therefore giving you a quieter setup and preventing dust buildup. If you're interested, there are some thermal test results on Mr. Add-ons that you can review. I would also like to thank Mr. Add-ons for sponsoring my channel and sending me this case. USB board, and some other goodies I plan to show you in the future. I'll be taking this opportunity to show you how to build a full master setup from scratch. So let's get started. If you plan on switching to this case from another one, or have a bare setup with some of the needed internal boards, there are a couple things you should know before obtaining this case. This case will not work with IO boards that have tall reset OSD and user buttons. The buttons should have a height of around 4.25 millimeters. Also, a USB board with a DC power jack and USB bracket is required. Mr. Add-ons will have everything you need and there are fully assembled kits if you don't feel like building a setup from scratch. With all that in mind, let's get to the build. The first thing that needs to be done is if you have a heatsink on the DE10 Nano's FPGA chip, you will want to remove it. The case itself will be our new heatsink. Before removing it, you will want to turn on and run the DE10 Nano for a couple of minutes so it can warm up and loosen the adhesive from the heatsink. When you're ready, unplug the DE10 Nano and remove the heatsink by gently twisting it left and right a couple of degrees until it comes off. In the description, I also link to Mr. Addon's video showing the same process. Now unscrew the front and back sides of the empty case and when done, put aside any of the items that might be in the case. Then let's apply the new included thermal pad. Remove the color film and apply that side of the thermal pad to the FPGA chip on the DE10 Nano. There's also a clear film on the top of the thermal pad and you also want to remove that. I'll now put aside all the screws and spacers I need for this build. And then screw in the yellow spacers to the I.O. board. We also are not going to need the fan too, so I'll remove that. Now let's attach the DE10 Nano and the I.O. board together. Make sure the VGA port on the I.O. board and the power port on the DE10 Nano are both on the same side. Align the pins on the I.O. board to the ports on the DE10 Nano and vice versa. The next step is to insert the USB board onto the aluminum case. Make sure that the power supply port of the USB board is on the same side as the case's user I.O. hole. Insert the board at an angle so you avoid this black rubber piece here. Take the USB bracket and insert it into the micro USB port of the DE10 Nano. Now insert the I.O. board and DE10 Nano at an angle that aims the SOG switch on the I.O. board to the case's SOG hole. Also make sure you align the USB bracket to the below pins that are on the USB board. We have these silver spacers that we want to screw to all four corners between the DE10 Nano and USB board. Use the long screws that are provided. They're a little tricky to line up with your fingers, so you may want to use a tool that would help you hold the spacers in place. Next, let's insert the RAM chip. I actually have forgotten to do this after I fully built the setup and had to reopen it. On the RAM chip, 
you'll see some text saying that this side faces outward. Make sure that side faces away from the board and then insert it into the empty GPIO pins. Now take the buttons and insert them into the holes on the top part of the case. Then take the top and place it on the top part of your setup. Make sure the case buttons align with the buttons on the I.O. board and that the long piece of the metal that sticks out the top part is placed on top of the thermal pad that's on the DE10 Nano's FPGA chip. The VGA port screws will prevent us from inserting one of the case's sides, so we need to remove the screws on the VGA port. Then place a back plate on the back of the setup. Use the available screws on the corners of the sides. And also screw in the newly provided VGA screws into the VGA port. Finally, take the front plate and screw it to the front of your setup. You're ready to plug it in and start using the mister. Just know that the DE10 Nano and USB board both use separate power, but this cable with the two barrel jacks will allow you to connect them to the same power supply. And here's the final build. The aluminum is really beautiful and gives off a premium feel. If you already have an SD card from a previous build that you want to reuse, just insert it into the SD card slot. Plug in your peripherals and use your Mr. FPGA as you always did. But if you want to start with a fresh SD card, you can check the description for my video on the Mr. Software setup. Also, here are some things to know. It is normal for the case to feel warm during usage. It's doing its job of acting like a heatsink. The case will not be hot, just warm, so you will not burn yourself. Remember, there are two SD card slots. You want to insert an SD card into the primary one. When you are inserting an SD card, make sure the backside is facing up. Another thing to know is to be careful when inserting the SD card. Insert the SD card closer to the top of the slot. There was one occurrence that I accidentally dropped the SD card inside the case because I inserted it pointing towards the lower bottom of the slot. If that happens, just open either the front or back of the case and you can let the SD card drop out. Alternatively, you can try to flip over the case and insert the SD card that way. This makes it a lot easier to insert the card when you do this. Just remember when in this orientation, the SD card front must be facing up. Anyway, hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. And if you want to see more content like this, hit the subscribe button and its bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll speak to you next time.